two, four, six, eight. Stop with the Nico Heischer hate. What do I mean by that? Well, let's analyze Nico Heischer's 2023-2024 season and the impact he has not only on the sheet of ice, but in the locker room. We have a lot to break down in today's episode. Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, College Hockey Club, a play announcer. Dell's Rider for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential MIA member, Trey Matthews. Let's talk about Nico Heischer, the captain. I've actually been meaning to do this episode for quite some time because I feel as though Nico is a scapegoat for a lot of the devil's discourse. What do I mean by that? Well, towards the end of the season on social media, I saw a lot of people call out Nico for not being a good leader, saying that he doesn't show enough heart or passion, he's not very vocal, and despite everything he did for the Devils this season, it it seems like people don't really give him the credit that he deserves. And I would argue and say, out of all the star players on the Devils, I'm assessing Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer himself, Jesper Bratt, Timo Meyer, maybe even Dougie Hamilton as stars for the New Jersey Devils, it seems as though Nico gets the least amount of love despite him being the captain. That's just from my perspective and what I see on social media because a lot of people have been praising Jesper Bratt for his consistency and also being named an all-star. Obviously, people talked about Jack Hughes' impact and how much it was felt when he was out of the lineup. People talked about the second half of the season for Timo Meyer after giving him a lot of crap for having a slow start. And people started to miss Dougie Hamilton when he was put onto the LTIR due to getting surgery to repair his left pectoral muscle. But for Nico, it seemed like a lot of people just were bashing on him. And I don't think it's justified, and I think it's time to silence some of the naysayers on Devil's Discourse, because I don't want to say it's most of the Devil's Discourse. I just see a few social media pages pop up here and there, and I've been looking forward to doing this episode ever since the season ended. In the first segment, we will look at Nico Heischer's impact from a statistical standpoint, and we will also play a soundbite courtesy of exit interviews. Then the second segment, we'll focus more on the narrative of Heischer's season, because like I said, he went through a lot and he still pulled through, and I think he is still a good leader. And it's not just my word. Let's hear what some of his teammates had to say, and also what Bill Spaulding, Cam Danico, Erica Walker uh, Bryce Salvador, all of them said on an MSG telecast to close out the season. Then the third and final segment, I'll gauge Nico Heischer going forward. Obviously, he's still going to remain the captain. But my ultimate goal for people who have given up on Nico Heischer, for people who say that he should be involved in the hypothetical Brady Kachuk trades that are never going to happen, I hope I change people's perspective and they look at Nico in a new light. All right, let's look at the statistical impact of Nico Heischer. This season, he appeared in 71 games, and he racked up 67 points. He was third on the team, right behind Bratt and Hughes. He had 40 assists, which also ranked third on the team behind Bratt and Hughes. He finished the year with 27 goals. Three-way tied for second ahead of him was Timo Meyer, and he was tied for second alongside with Bratt and Hughes once again. He was tied for first for even strength goals with 20 on the power play. He had six power play goals, which ranked fifth on the team. He had 11 power play assists, fourth on the team. He had an offensive point share rating of 5.5, third on the team. 1.5 defensive point share, ranked 11th on the team, a little bit of a fallback compared to last season, but nothing too alarming. He had a point share rating of seven, which ranked third on the team, right behind Bratt and Hughes. And he had a faceoff win percentage of 56.6% which was third on the team. He was behind Michael McLeod and Chris Tierney. Obviously, McLeod not active on the roster, but Tierney is someone I want to talk about in a future episode because everything I said about Tierney and what he was supposed to bring to the Devils, he kind of showcased that, but obviously 
This episode is centered around Nico Heischer. All right, when looking at all those stats, he was right up there with Jesper Bratt, Jack Hughes, and also Timo Meyer. Yet, why is he given the least amount of credit? Because a lot of people, once again, gave Timo Meyer, Jesper Bratt, and Jack Hughes their roses. But for Nico, despite him being the captain, he is still severely underrated because I didn't hear many people give Nico the credit that I think he deserved. When looking at his season from an optics standpoint, similar to a lot of his teammates, he went through a lot because we all remember what happened first half of the year where he missed nearly a month of action due to an impact to the head he took at the hands of Connor Clifton. Obviously, Clifton had to be suspended by a couple of games because he violated the rules and the NHL. I'm glad they took action in that regards. But Nico Heischer missed significant time, and you felt his impact. And Lindy Ruff, the head coach at the time, and a few of the players acknowledged that Nico brings a lot to the roster. I remember speaking to Lindy Ruff post game, first game back for Heischer after the injury. And what Ruff said that Heischer does is that. He makes things a lot easier for the Devils, both offensively and defensively, because obviously he is a great two-way player, and he finished second in the Selkie Award last season. Unfortunately, he lost to Patrice Bergeron, and that was to be expected because that was anticipated to be Bergeron's last go-around, and it was only right that Bergeron won the award as a result, but I know Nico will get his name back into the Selkie Award race sooner rather than later. Not this year, but still, he has a lot to look forward to. Clearly, one of the biggest issues for the Devils this season, and this is something I'm going to continue to hammer home during the course of the offseason, that the Devils dealt with a decent amount of injuries. I spoke about Nico Heischer. I talked about Jack Hughes, Timo Meyer electing to go for their respective surgeries towards the end of the year. And there's a few other players that dealt with injuries here and there in more ways than one. And Nico talked about it during exit interviews, how much injuries had an impact on the team. Take a listen. Nico, what, type, what type of impact did the injuries have on this team to finish the way we did? Um, I mean, obviously, uh, yeah, we had some, some guys out, in and out, and... Uh, Injuries were were a little bit part of our group uh, the whole year, so uh, it's definitely a fact. But uh, it shouldn't like change. I think at the end of the day, it's always like in an organization you you have good players, and it's always whoever is in the lineup uh, needs to do his best, and uh, guys stepping up for each other. So it's not really an excuse, but it's definitely a fact that we've been missing a couple guys uh, throughout our lineup the whole year. The big thing that I got from that soundbite is that he said no excuses because the Devils had their chances to try to sneak their way into the playoffs because they were given a few mulligans. Let's be real. And I give them a pass just because they could never establish that chemistry with everyone out there. But Nico, once again, said that there's no room for excuses and he knew that the expectations were decent because the Devils had a historic 2022-2023 season. And this is going to tie in to the next segment in which I look at Nico Heischer's season from a different perspective and how much his leadership means to this team. But before we continue, let me tell you about Monopoly Go. We've all been there before, either as a player or as a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking too good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out with a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game and pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That reminds me of a certain video game, but digressing a little bit. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store 
or Google Play. Okay, I want to play this soundbite from Nico Heischer in which he talked about the art of believing in his team because, like I said to close out the previous segment, there were a decent amount of expectations going into the year for the Devils, and obviously they fell short. Take a listen. Nico, is that, is that belief from last year still alive in this room, or is, is, is it impacted at all by, by a season like this? What do you think? No, of course. Um, I think that has not, and I hope it hasn't changed for everyone. I think uh, even more now, like, we should believe, like, to see what we did last year, where we are now, like, believe, and but no, it's, like, not coming from nothing. you got to work hard, and now you got to earn it, and I think this, this year proved it. So, belief is obviously 100% still there, and, uh, yeah, we just uh, didn't had a great year and uh, move on from here and do it next season. Okay, that soundbite ties into the previous soundbite that I played, which is I think that's a good showing as to what Nico Heischer is as a leader, as a captain, and I feel like people need to highlight that a little bit more because when he talked about the injury bug that the Devils endured, he didn't make excuses. When he talked about the belief, he said that he's trying to keep the morale high because he knows that his team can do better and he knows that they're going to be coming out guns blazing come next year. That's my personal perspective. I think people just need to understand that Nico is a good leader and you don't have to take my word for it, courtesy of my pal Christy Flannery over at the Hockey News. She spoke with a couple of other Devils players during exit interviews and here's what a few players had to say about Nico Heischer and his leadership. Curtis Lazar said, it is easy when you're winning, but when things go sideways, Heischer is one of the front and center answering all the questions. He is such a young hockey guy with a calm demeanor, and he's really, I think, the heartbeat of our hockey club. We rely upon him a lot. All right. High praise coming from Curtis Lazar, who is a veteran player. And here's what Chris Tierney had to say about Nico Heischer. He said, obviously, he is a great player, but when you play with them and see the details, the face-off, the defensive game, him being a leader, you get a good appreciation for that. All right, I think that speaks volume as to what Nico Heischer is because Curtis Lazar, he's been a bit of a journeyman. He's played in, in for a few different teams prior to joining the Devils, and the fact that he spoke highly of Nico Heischer, I hope that gives everyone a better perspective because – one of the things that just frustrated me when I'm looking at social media and I see that people are blaming Nico Heischer, with all due respect, you're not in the locker room, so why are you jumping to those types of conclusions? Why are you saying that Nico lost the locker room or, or something like that? And another thing that kind of boiled my blood is that I'm seeing videos pop up on social media where Nico Heischer has his head down, he's showing frustration I'm just like, you're taking a video out of context because I'm sure Nico is not the only one that demonstrates frustration when things aren't going his way. In fact, I think we as humans do that a lot as well. So why are we putting that type of microscope on Nico Heischer? I don't think that's fair. And I'm going to call out just a few people from the Devil's Discourse because I understand that it is a small percentage, but I think there's been a lot of finger pointing throughout the course of this season, and people are too quick to try to find a scapegoat. What do I mean by that? Well, the thing is, is like, Nico Heischer, I said in the first segment, that guy bounced back from injury. He missed almost an entire month of action, and yet when he came back, you felt his impact. And I read you his stats. He was tops in a lot of key categories for the Devils, both from an offensive standpoint and a defensive perspective as well. And another reason why I don't think it's smart to trade Nico Heischer for Brady Kachuk is because Nico Heischer is really holding the center position down for the Devils because if he is dealt away, then you lose a lot of depth at the center position. And we've been talking about the issue that the Devils have on their defensive depth when Dougie Hamilton went down. You see that sort of impact. You see that type of void. And it is not easy to fill. And Nico Heischer, he carries a lot of that load. 
When people say that he is not a vocal leader, you are absolutely correct. He is not a vocal leader, and people can attest to that. And Bill Spaulding, Candanico, Erica Walker, and Bryce Salvador, they talked about it on an MSG telecast, which is Nico Heischer, he's not going to get in your face. He's not going to scream from the top of his lungs. He's not going to do that. That's not his style of leadership. He leads by example. And case in point, look at those couple sound bites I literally just played. I think it's a good example where he leads by example, and at the same time, he can back it up because that guy didn't make any excuses when he came back from injury, and he is still putting up some good production. Just a good example of leading by example, and I think people can be a little more appreciative of that. And from my perspective, having been in the locker room, having spoken to Nico Heischer before, he has provided me with a few good sound bites. Some that come to mind is like last year when the Devils were in Arizona. This was when Timo Meyer made his Devils debut. And I talked about how people still underestimated him and his team. He literally told me, I don't care what those people say. We focus on what's in our locker room. And why not? Let's prove everyone wrong. Or when the Devils were down three to one, against the Carolina Hurricanes, and they were on the brink of elimination, and they had to go back to Raleigh, what did he tell me? He said, it's not done. And if you're not believing, then you got to go home and not come to Carolina. You guys ate that up when I posted that on social media. So my thing is, leave Nico Keisher alone. It's not fair to make him the scapegoat for the devil's struggles. Yes, this season did not go according to plan. And when going back to scapegoats and the idea surrounding it, I even told you guys late in the year that there's not an easy fix for Devils. This is something that they're going to have to fix during the course of the summer because you guys wanted a coaching change. And honestly, I think Lindy did lose the locker room at one point and they, it was so late in the year, they couldn't find a full fledged head coach. So they named Travis green, the interim head coach. But that didn't really change all that much. Obviously, I did agree with uh, Travis Green's method at times, like giving Timo Meyer a bigger role or making Nemitz a healthy scratch at one point because he was absolutely gassed. But for the most part, nothing really changed for Devils. They were still wildly inconsistent. They got better goaltending, but still, Kakanen and Allen, they had their moments, and I still believe firm to this very minute that the tandem of Kakanen and Allen is not going to get you far in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Devils defense still needs some sandpaper type action to it. It's a little too soft. There's a lot of issues that went on with the Devils from injuries to front office to the coaching staff, you name it. But why is it on Nico Heischer's shoulders? That's my question for you. Is Nico really the cause of all the issues that the Devils went through? I personally don't think so. All right, we're going to assess what Nico Heischer can do from here and how I see his role in the future. Obviously, it's still going to be a big one. But before we continue, let me tell you about Indeed. Did Lindy Ruff find his new gig with the Buffalo Sabres on Indeed? Or did the Devils post a job listing for a head coach on Indeed? I don't really know. But if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments and virtual interviews. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search according to U.S. Indeed data. Indeed knows what you're doing to grow your own business and you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applicants that meet your must-have requirements. And now with Indeed, you only pay for quality applicants that meet your hiring criteria. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys something that might actually surprise you. It's a fact that's strange but true. Nico Heischer is 25. He's considered a young guy throughout the league. But the thing is, is like, despite him being young, we can't really say that he's a young buck. He's not a spring chicken because he is now suited up in 452 NHL games. 
meaning that I think it's starting to get to a point where we have to call him a veteran because he's been around the block a few more times than the average NHL player, if we're being completely honest. But I still think that Nico has a lot of room to grow and improve. And I'm not saying like he's near nearing the end of his prime. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying like he's been in the league for a while and he's starting to figure it out a lot more because I remember a couple years ago, people were writing Nico Heischer off because similar to Jack Hughes, he was injury prone. He missed two thirds of the 2021 56 game COVID shortened season. And I said, even though he missed a decent amount of games, he still has a lot of potential. And I think he can definitely showcase that to everyone. But the very next year, 2021, 2022 season, it kind of was similar to the season he had this year, which was he suited up in 70 games. He had 21 goals, 39 assists for a grand total of 60 points. But this time around in that similar amount of games, he got 67 points, which I think showcases his improvement. And he has shown so much growth and development these last few seasons. And I think he has still only begun to scratch the surface because I said it last year and I will say it again. Nico Heischer is going to win the Selkie Trophy at one point because he's a phenomenal two-way player. And if you just need to find some sort of proof, just compare and contrast the games that he plays in and the games he's out for. The difference is night and day because he brings a different dynamic, both offensively and defensively. And Lindy Ruff confirmed that first half of the season. And another thing that I want everyone to know is that he sure was actually a part of one of my favorite lineup combinations throughout the course of the year. It was him, Jesper Bratt, and also Andre Pilat. For, I would say, the first half of the year, that was arguably one of the Devils best lines. And then obviously to close out the year, you had Timo Meyer, Nico Kiescher, and Jesper Bratt. And that also worked wonders. But I think what really tied both those lines together is the centerman, which is Nico Kiescher, because he can do a little bit of everything. Because with Timo Meyer, he brings the physicality. Nico Kiescher, he plays both ends of the ice. And Jesper Bratt, he is the bona fide scorer. Whereas the combination of him, Andre Pilat, and Jesper Bratt on his wingers, Andre Pilat, pretty decent uh, defensively. Nico Heischer, I just said what he can do. And Jesper Bratt, I literally said what he can do. And I think that glue piece is Nico Heischer. And I think that speaks volume to his character and his development. Now, here's the one thing I want to see from Nico Heischer. And this might be a bit of a tall order. But come next year, I want him to be a little bit more selfish. As in... I want him to shoot the puck a lot more and not set up someone else. I want him to shoot it because he has created good looks for himself. And obviously he does usually make the extra pass because he thinks someone else has a better opportunity. But going back to what I've been saying throughout the course of the episode, he's the leader of this team and he should feel it's his due diligence to shoot that damn puck because if Nico Heischer starts scoring, the Devils start winning a lot more. I get it. It's not really his first instinct to shoot because there's a lot of mouths to feed for the Devils, including Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, and Timo Meyer. But I just want to see Nico Heischer be just a tad bit more selfish. I know it's not really in his character, but I just think for the sake of taking his game to the next level and also just racking up more wins for, for New Jersey, I think if he just shoots it a lot more, I think we're going to see big things from Heischer. And this is something I'm probably going to circle back to a little later in the offseason, right before the start of preseason. And let's see if my thought process has changed or not. But anyway, the point of this episode, leave Nico Heischer alone. He is not the reason for the devil's struggles. And in terms of his leadership, I gave you all the proof I could potentially give you from my perspective and also a few other players' perspectives. If that doesn't convince you, I don't know what else will, but I'm curious to your guys' thoughts. Leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. What are your thoughts on Nico Kiescher's gameplay and also his leadership? And what would you like to see him do differently? Once again, leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMat4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for his episode, that's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.